All right, let's begin. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your uh, patience running a little late. Uh, but welcome to the November 14th um, planning board. Uh, before we start, we've got two hearings tonight. Before we start, if there's uh, any comments that uh, anyone would like to make uh, that aren't specifically uh, tied to the two hearings that we're going to hear that has something to do with something else, raise your hand and, and we can listen to you at the podium. If not, we will move ahead to our first hearing. So, first hearing called for 7 o'clock is the continuation of request by O'Connell Development Group for a major site plan for 23 townhouse units, special permit greater than five foot setback, and more than one curb cut at 10 Holly Street, Northampton, map ID 32A 171. And we've got a presentation. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm Andrew Crystal. Um, O'Connell Development, 51 Orlander Drive, and, and Jeff is going to go through, there were a handful of comments at the last hearing, um, which we also had to continue for technical reasons, um, that he's reviewed both with DPW, with Dave Valletta, and with Doug McDonald on the stormwater. I think Carolyn's been copied on everything. Jeff's had an opportunity to update the plans and incorporate all of the comments from DPW on He's just gonna walk you through those and any other comments that were not addressed from last year or new ones tonight. Our hope is that you've got all the information you need to close the hearing and vote this evening if possible. Okay. Great. Thank you, Andrew. So, uh, as Andrew said, I was able to um, update the plans based on both Dave and Doug's comments. Um, oh, and for the record, uh, again, Jeff Galarno, project engineer of EHV. Um, so I was able to update the same slideshow um, that we've presented before. I've updated the plan so I can quickly go through those. Um, just to get a bearings again here. This is an aerial photo of the site and you can see Holly Street here and Phillips Place. What's in red is actually the area of the site that we're developing. Yellow is the easement to Phillips Place and the gray is the church which we are leaving as is. Um, no changes on this. This is pretty much uh, the same. If we have questions later, I can go back to this. This is an easy slide to, to talk to. Um, so the plan set here shows today's date. Uh, they were updated. So the last the last round, I won't go through all the comments that we have from the last the first round, but um, both Doug and Dave each had additional like three or four comments that I was able to address. I've spoken with them on the phone and have an email that Karen, you run uh, uh, CC on those. But uh, the um, uh, comments that they have uh, uh, gave us, they said they were very minor um, and uh, we were able to update the plans. I will uh, send them another formal submittal with the plans and drainage report for their final review um, and, uh, and approval. I'll skip to, this is a demo plan actually that we've added. We didn't have it originally, but it was a comment. Um, so we've gone through and we've um, shown what will be removed, what will stay. Um, and uh, it's kind of difficult to see up there, but it's an addition to the plan set that wasn't there before. So it's, it's a demo plan. The, uh, so this, the layout materials, um, not much has changed here. There was an additional comment for the I'll circle it here, that is a concrete rumble strip, which was the delineation between the two curb cuts. The only comment he had there was just to put some spot grades on it to um, uh, show what, what the elevations are and how it, will be, how it can be built in that transition for the apron of the curb cut. Um, go to the next sheet. So the grading and drainage were, were basically the majority of those, those comments. Uh, we've updated the drainage to show now the, this subsurface uh, system to the infiltration. And then in the back here, it is uh, going to be an infiltration trench uh, underneath that swale. The locations of the systems are the same. However, this one is now infiltration and the configuration of it is just a slight, slightly different from what we showed before, uh, pulling it away from the property line um, and uh, extending it a little bit in this direction. 
Um, I'll jump right to the utility sheet here. We had a sanitary sewer connection into um, Holly Street. Uh, we had a new manhole uh, in Holly Street to give us a better shot at 90 degree angle to the existing manhole for a better flow, uh, hydrologic flow. So, um, uh, hydraulic flow. So he said that uh, he went out to the site, they took photos, the sewer foreman was out there, um, took, some, took some pictures of the manhole. Uh, it's a brick manhole, there's a shelf at the bottom. All we had to do was just raise our invert to be above the shelf and, um, and remove the proposed manhole. He said there's enough flow in that, um, that line that we can come in at, um, instead of coming in at 90, we have a different angle and he has no problem with that. So we were able to remove a manhole and make that connection right into the existing structure. Uh, we've checked all site, uh, all utility conflicts uh, and there, there are no conflicts uh, in Holly Street. We had um, in this location here, there are a few existing area drains that we are gonna remove, but we have a note in the plan to actually investigate them prior to doing so, just to make sure that there's nothing else coming into those lines. But we added two area drains, which under the last set of comments, we were carrying them out to Holly Street. One of those additional comments that they had were to just remove that additional um, invert into Holly Street and just bring it and put it into our underground system, which we did. Before you leave utilities, sure. all the electrical and cable are underground, all of the units? Correct, yep. All that's underground and uh, it would be difficult <coughs> to zoom in on here to see it, but um, we do come up above ground off of Holly Street to an existing pole to make the connection and then we go underground from there through the site. Yeah. Uh, any more questions on utilities here? Moving forward. And again, all the all the comments have been addressed. Nothing changed on erosion and sediment control, and then we get into some details. So we did receive the uh, stormwater permit with some with those conditions. What I were the plan updates, which I just went through with you. So um, I will be uh, sending out an updated set of plans. Which which seat calls out the trees to be removed and the trees to be saved? That new demo seat. Yeah, we have the the demo sheet does call out um, those trees to be removed to show big X's uh, or you know a clouded area but the landscape uh, landscaping plan has has the calculations and, and all that information for uh, new trees for what we had removed yeah some of those crosses are trees existing trees oh, when I saw the, the ones in the front yeah, yeah the four, six or four F five there's five, five of those trees in the front that will be moved yeah Um, talking about utilities, uh, and I don't. Did you have you seen the comments by staff uh, for this or no? Maybe not. Uh, there was a question about uh, final lighting as built uh, shall be submitted, showing lighting in compliance with the zoning and not in excess of three thousand feet. Right. We don't have any. We don't have any lights um, on the site. Okay. It's only what we went through last time, which would be the the sconces, the building yeah. lights on the on okay. the all right, so we just need, so that was just a condition that we don't seem to have an issue with, but yet, um, there was some ambiguity, I guess, in the drawings. Um, questions by the board? We, we talked about the, uh, the pedestrian access from Holly Street up along that parking lot that stops at one point, and then there's another pedestrian access from Phillips mm -hmm. to those back units. Mm -hmm. Correct, and that's we're all comfortable with that. And I, unfortunately, I don't know what it looks like on the plans now. But um, it was a different was material, <laughs> so it's um, sort of a cobble, or um, it was I think stamped concrete. Um. Yeah. So a lot. So the access off of Holly Street has uh, it's a three foot wide section of stamped concrete along the drive aisle that serves as two purposes one for uh, <coughs> emergency vehicles to get in and out of the site but also right. for right. rather than the pedestrians walking the road they, they have now um, an off sh off road off st uh, street walkway to get to holly street yeah and phillips place yeah or to the or to the easement 
And there's going to be like a no parking sign. Well, uh, within the site? No, on this great, on this little path. Think we the easement up. right yes. here? Yeah. No, 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 not, not there. The, the, oh, this along here? Yeah, for the emergency vehicles, you know, you're sort of yeah. sidewalk slash emergency. Yeah, we don't currently have any no parking signs along there. Get to a better view. I mean, can you imagine someone? Is it? It would it be absurd to think that someone? We don't. We don't see them. It's three feet wide. Okay, I, I'm just. Wide. Okay, I mean. Yeah. I think I'd block the driveway. Okay. Are they sort of parking and all? Yeah. Can we? Go ahead. We discussed that all uh, trash and recycling is per individual owner. There's not going to be a centralized correct receptacle. Correct. Did you send an email towards us? Comment that I make since the day of yesterday. An email that to remind you. Or remind oh, that was for the was other, other project. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks. Any other comments by the board before we ask for public input? Um, so I'm just interested in so there's this is phase one. If there is a phase two and three, depending upon a lot of situations, they would come back before us for another permit. It'll piggyback on this. So I just want to make sure that we're not somehow tying the city's hands or the developer's hands by kind of agreeing to any of this. Like, I'm sure the uh, DPW was cognizant of that when they did, looked at the plans mm -hmm. yeah. about what the future load would be on the systems. And yeah. The reuse of the um, church may not trigger a review by the planning board, <coughs> the church building itself, but any development in the uh, on the parking lot on the other side right. would trigger a review. A couple of years ago, probably now, we this board approved a development that was similar but not the same, um, that included the church and the parking lot and the housing behind and so forth. So. Um, so I, I don't. I wouldn't anticipate any issues, but they'd have to come back in front of us. Anyway. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. This open right now and open this up to public comment. Uh, if somebody from the pop public is here that wishes to comment, just raise your hand. I'll call on you, and you can come to the podium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you can just I'm state your name and address. Hello, my name is Patty Stoddard. I live at Twenty Two Phillips Place. Um, I'm reading this on behalf of, of um, actually our na our neighbor um, Chris Lynn and his wife Aisha actually wrote this, but my husband and I are in agreement. We've also talked with some of our other um, neighbors that are in agreement with this. So I just want to read it to get it on record. Um, I don't know if this is specifically pertaining to the topic here tonight. It's about this project, but not specifically some of the things that have already been brought out as far as the um, sewer and the water and all of that. But um, the, the letter says, we are concerned with the proposed construction of 23 townhouses at 10 Holly Street with a non-conforming buffer. That was at the last meeting that we attended for the um, zoning. Um, as our property on tw 22 properties at 22 and 24 Phillips Place about this parcel, we are troubled about the close proximity of the townhouses in relation to the current structures. We also have some doubts as to the overdevelopment of this historical residential neighborhood. Hopefully the developers consider the aesthetic nature and architecture of the neighborhood and incorporate these factors in their plans and to seriously reconsider increasing the offsets between the current and proposed structures from what is currently shown on the developer site plan. I'm an um, Mike Stoddard at 22 Phillips Place. The, the last development that came in, that we sat through the meetings that they had, they talked about, you know, what windows they were going to use and what building materials they were going to use to build the structures. And I, it's like nobody's nobody's talked about any of that through these meetings with this this development. Is that something that you require? Or is that something I I believe I was at every meeting that we had prior to? 
Um, so there was discussion about uh, um, the last, the first public hearing the planning board had, there was a whole discussion about the elevations and the building and the um, step backs and all the um, architectural elements of the building. Uh, this project is within the central business district. So on top of the discussion that the board heard at the last hearing, um, any new building construction in the central business district does require architectural review by the Central Business Architecture Committee. The applicant has not filed yet with the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, but the plans were developed <coughs> with that in mind. I think they'll be following the court after this um, permit. Um, they would, I assume, are going to file with the Central Business Architecture Committee. So that will also trigger a public hearing. Oh, so that comes out like a later. At a later time. Whenever they file right. and we schedule a hearing, yep. What about the landscaping? When when do we have discussion about the landscaping? That's been you know, actually the illustration right now pictorially shows uh, the landscaping there. Yeah, it shows what plan. they want to do is they want to put in a hedgerow uh, from the trees between the two trees, and they've talked about two and a half gallon um, arborvitae or use that they want to use. In a two and a half gallon arborvitae. When you take it out of a can and you put it in the ground, it's probably two and a half to three feet tall. And this is supposed to be used as a buffer zone. And a lot of the pictures that we saw is where the landscape had developed over time and they looked bigger. But when they go on the ground, they're only going to be pictured two and a half to three feet off the ground. My question is, on, we, we've asked a couple of times to see what the, what the development would look like from our side of the road as opposed we've seen the beautiful pictures of the development from the other side and i'm not i'm not against this plan by any means but we've asked several times to see what it looks like from from our side what are we going to be looking at when this development is done and we have not yet seen any pictures of what it's going to look like the last meeting they said well we could probably get something together I haven't seen it yet and my, my one question I would have of them if the landscape architect is here or whoever could answer the question is, where the grade is on the, where the, um, the hall is, where that roadway come, goes behind our house. My question is, is that where the, is that where the buffer will, will start? In other words, are we gonna be on the same plane? Or is that gonna drop down and then, and then begin? Can anybody answer, answer that? We'll go. Um, I'll have. Them. We'll take all the questions and then I'll have them come back up and, and address, oh, okay. What, okay. address what they can. Because I'm thinking if it's you know at one point I heard it was going to drop a bit, okay. So if it drops, there goes our buffer of three feet. It's gone. We we have no buffer. So I just think in the, you know in the interest of the neighbors that are that live there, that they could put in much larger U's. You can buy them all different sizes. I mean I put in a hedgerow myself one time at my last home. <clears throat> and probably probably put in years that were this this tall that came in a in a um, burlap wrap you know a two and a half gallon that's somebody that's something that somebody puts on their in the front of a, a flip house you know I just think it's too small I think you, you guys should think about how big these plants okay. especially if it's dropped if it drops down okay and that's that's basically it. Okay, thank you thank you they all have Hello, uh, City Councilor Jim Nash, and um, and I'm here speaking on behalf of constituents who are here and not here. Um, so far, um, so things that concern people, and I'm not sure how much we can actually change things here, but um, have to do with uh, the the, sh the setback of the buildings from the abutters. That it's you know that. Um, it's 20 feet or less roughly between the back property lines uh, for the the abutters on uh, Phillips Place uh, the height of the buildings um, in relationship to the, uh, the the abutters on uh, Phillips uh, the um, the construction of many of these homes are have that flat roof I you know I don't know if it's what are they Italianate or whatever the design is that um, so that they, they sit lower 
and uh, that these structures are going to be, you know, they're going to have a, an additional third floor. It'll look like three floors because of the garages on the first floor and then the roof. And that's where you get the building height from. So that there's concern about that. I'm not so sure what can be decided around that. Um, the, but the overall statement I want to make, and I, I made this to the ZBA, that that this property is zoned central business. And it is zoned central business because, I don't know, five years ago we decided as a city that uh, we wanted to zone it as central business with the idea that it would help preserve the church. The, the, that's, that's why it has this status right now, rather than being URC. And that, um, that and as uh, Mr. Taylor pointed out last time, that this is, this is phase one of possibly three different phases here. Second phase would be the parking lot where, um, where it's been discussed that there could be some construction there and that the overall plan here, and, and, and I know that once the property is sold and is in the hands of, uh, of O'Connell, that they're gonna have rights as property owners to do lots of things that I'm talking about here that it's what I'm trying to do is publicly just hold their feet to the fire that that some of the latitude that um, the property owner is going to have here is with the idea that the church structure hopefully be preserved and and find in and that a commercial uh, a property use be, be found for that and um, and I think mr. Taylor pointed out last time that and I thought it was a very good point that when we talk about developing the parking lot as well that also impacts the ability of the church structure being preserved you know it's like the whole thing's supposed to go together and that um, that I just want to publicly state that and I also know that through the discussions with mr. crystal that they're thinking along those lines and but I just want to put that into the public space here um, and then um, just two other things I want to talk about I, I'd like to hear from uh, the developers it has to do with any of the lighting you know what would the lighting look like on the back of those um, structures that are you know fairly close uh, Mr. Stoddard's talked about you know some shrubs and things you know maybe um, but the building's going to be pretty close, and what kind of lighting would, would go in there? And also, if while the shrubs are growing, whether some sort of other screening might be entertained. Um, and then last thing had to do with stormwater and runoff. That in terms of th that uh, right now, I, I don't know if there's uh, stormwater drains on the, dri the current drive or anything like that, but where is the storm water for the back of these structures going to go? We don't want it ru running onto their properties because the, um, the development is actually a little bit higher as, as Mike was talking about. And so, and I, I think I heard reference to something about water running down towards where the church would be, but some a, a little elaboration around that. So, thank you. Okay, super, thank you. Uh, anybody else from the public? Uh, Jeff, do you want to respond to some of these? I can give them uh, back to you, uh, and you can speak to starting on. Um, let's see. Well, in backwards order, the stormwater and drainage concern, and uh, uh, the screening, the, the height of the plantings, where they are, how big sure. they are, so forth. Sure. Yeah. So, if I was hearing correctly. Uh, the concern is along this back area so we, we actually have a small retaining wall in this area which we are lower on the patio side than on this side so the, as far as the stormwater goes this back area is actually graded and I'll, I'll keep on this sheet rather than going to the grading plan it's easier to see but the grading will have water flow this way in this direction no, away from or not towards the abutter. Uh, this is a grass area. Uh, we had some 
soil testing out there, so the infiltration, there will be some infiltration. Um, there's a high point right in this location at the back of the church. So any water that's from this point will also go this way. And this brings me to the point uh, I was discussing before about the area drains in this location. So the two area drains that we have in this location will pick up all, any stormwater that is collected around here. Any stormwater in this area, again, will be sheet flowing in this direction, okay. not this direction. And can you speak to the retaining wall, the height of the retaining wall, and what the difference elevation-wise would be from the, it, from the patio to... Yeah, it varies in, in, in along, it, the wall varies along this property line about two to three feet. It's not a, it's not a high wall, so it, it changes in elevation. But you've got a two to three foot wall on top of which you'd have a three foot arbor vitae. Correct. So and roughly a six row. foot screen. Yes, okay. yeah. I, I understand that at the planting, the, the day of planting it is low, but they will will grow about, uh, I think there was about a foot a year. A year. Um, so in a few years, it'll be back, it'll be up enough. So you have the two or three feet plus, you know, the height of that, okay. the planting, correct. Um, the, let's see, the lighting on the back of the building. I don't know if you have any elevations yeah, so, there. Hi, Charles Roberts, Q and Real Architects. The lighting on the back, all the lighting in the back of the building is going to be uh, light fixtures that will be downcast and um, mounted underneath the balconies that are on the uh, on the second floor and hanging over uh, the outdoor area. So, just enough lighting to provide um, you know safe movement through the backyards for the people that are, for the residents that are living in those units themselves. But uh, you know. No frog emergency lights. No no uh, lights on poles. No uh, no lighting bollards. Um, there's, a, there's a couple more. Are those lighting so that lighting are they on timers? Are they on all the time? Or are they um, do you know functionally how those are anticipated to? These, these are lights. If, if I could, they're they're just lights by their back doors. There's there's no visible lamp. It's a down light, so it just lights the area below it. Right, so it's here's, like have on but it's on door. when the owner wants it on. It's not. Yeah, on it's on the switch. Yeah, so this is this is the this is the rear elevation here, and uh, these are these are the balconies that would be overlooking the uh, the sliding doors out of the uh, out of the lower level, and we would just put probably one, maybe two uh, LED recessed down lights in the, in the underneath of those decks. So no visible glare, just enough. Light to come down and light the area in front of those lower doors. Thank you. Can can, I, can we see the the front? Um, I, I just uh, there was a um, I was recollection of there were some when there were some sections that didn't have windows and we just didn't and it looked sort of strange. At which areas are? Right in the front. It was a while ago. In the front. Um, well, let me see. I can show you. Uh, this is this is the uh, sort of flattened out elevation from Bridge Street. You sort of have to imagine the post office and the antique store yeah. there to the right. Um, that's that street elevation um, there. This is the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is another project. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, you're part of. I get it. Back to the lighting. I mean, our building code says that no light can come from this project onto an abutters land, right? So even if a homeowner five years from now will put up a spotlight or something, it's, it's, not, allowed. Want, it's right. not allowed. I mean, it's on the, unfortunately the abutter has to call the building owner or the building inspector to well, enforce that. Well, it goes that, both but, ways too, right? Yeah. Neighbors on Phillips Place yeah, right. putting his hotline on. Right, right. So, um, <coughs> so and just while we were looking at that last one, we, we heard recently that there was a 20 foot setback between the abutters line and the rear of the building. And then if the patio comes out, what's the set? Are we still within the setback limit from the, the a hard patio to the abutters property? Setbacks are to buildings. Um, the zoning board did review all of the non-conforming buffer um, requirements. So the zoning board granted a permit for a reduction in the buffer and looked at all the landscaping in that relationship. So that permit sort of that was under their jurisdiction. Um, I will also say that um, 
the reason why currently the zoning allows or requires a buffer between commercial zones and residential is for the purposes of separating commercial potential commercial uses and residential uses. This is a residential use X or residential use. Additionally, um, Councilor and Ash brought up the fact that, well, we did rezone this to central business, which then triggered those buffers, whereas under urban residential C, there are no buffers from residential use to residential use. So it would actually be no, the setbacks would be much smaller, and there would be no buffer requirement um, for this type of use in a URC district. Uh, the other piece is in urban residential C, the height <coughs> is 55 feet. Central business, they're 70 feet. So this is well within even a URC zoning height um, limitation, so, or maximum height. Was there any, any movement or change to the, to putting, to making them do a commercial, some sort of commercial space in the first unit? So they're required before they build, they have to do a first ground floor commercial the one that fronts Holly yeah. Street. But we did talk about the fact that we're in process of um, form-based code modifications that would treat side streets differently from the main spine on Main Street and King and Pleasant. And so it may very well be by the time they construct that there won't be that right. requirement right. for commercial. Right. Well. right. Yeah. So right now they're planning for that commercial space to meet the zoning, right. but so, it could change. So they build real slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and given how long it's taken for the church to sell <laughs> the property, <laughs> it might work out there. So how, how high is from the ground to the balcony? Um, let me just go back here. Yeah. So from this first, this first balcony is is the one that face that you think. Yeah, so that balcony is you know maybe nine foot six above above the the ground. This is my mouse working here. So this the, yeah. these these balcony, that distance is you know from the top of the deck down here is maybe nine nine foot six somewhere in that range here. Can't there? There is a dimension here which I can't see. I don't think you can enlarge it. Yeah, I think you can zoom up on it, Charles. If you roll a button. No, oops. No, I guess not. Sorry. All right. I was just going to get my glasses and look at the screen here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me? I don't know if I can see the number on the left. I think it's. I can't read it. Yeah, it's up too much. pixelated. Yeah. Uh, well, it's less than 35 feet. That's <laughs> 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 um, It yeah. has to be over 30 feet because the minimum height in central business is 30 feet. But they, I think they were just over that. Right, but right again, in, the, this, in all the residential <laughs> districts, 35 feet is the maximum. In URC, the maximum is 55 uh, feet. So it's not the the height from the ground to the balcony, see, because they put the lights under the balcony, right? Mm -hmm. And how much that can. There's a picture of the light on that drawing to the right side. It's just a down light. Yeah. As long as it doesn't create glare or yeah. um, goes off property, it's conforming. So. Okay. Yeah. So you can see the down light. That's not. <clears throat> that's just for. You know, for access in the back door. That's not a big. Yeah. Um, that's it as far as the questions that just came up. Um, <coughs> thank you, Charles. Any other questions from the public? Sure. Well, what I'm so confused about the about the uh, retaining wall is it at the same height as what it is now, and what's the retaining wall made out of? And if it's obviously it's concrete, you're not going to put rubber bodies on top of a concrete wall. No, so the, the, so the, front of the, wall. the grade at the patios here, the wall goes up two or three feet. The planting will be behind the wall another three feet up. Oh, so, oh okay. All right. So depending, yeah. the wall goes two to three feet front to back. So that like, explains yeah. uh, that. That's what I was missing. So okay, you're so five to six feet. Wall, then they're going to build it up behind the wall and right. put the three. I got it. Yeah, right. That's what I'm, I did not understand. That. Yeah. Uh, so I'll leave the uh, here the 
public comment open uh, right now in case we have some back and forth uh, with the applicant. Um, I just wanted to read some of the uh, comments from staff, uh, some of which we've talked about, uh, just to make sure that we're all in agreement. Um, first up, plan uh, set should include a demolition plan. You've included that. All storm drain pipes in the right uh, of way shall be RCP. Uh, add an eight foot wide painted crosswalk across Phillips Place in accordance with the DPW standards. Yes. Are you not a guess because you will, you will do that? Or that's They're on these plans. Okay. okay. Include all other details as necessary in compliance with the DPW. We talked about that. Tree protection for all trees to remain must be installed and inspected. That's kind of a standard. Uh, final tree, prior to the issuance, issuance of a certificate of occupancy, final tree replacement must be made for the 154 inches of tree removed. Which I think that's reflected already. Uh, and final lighting as built, which we talked about, stamp by an engineer and, and no lighting over 3,000 K. So no issues with any of those, most of which have already addressed. Okay. Uh, the only comment I had, uh, so are there are no open DPW comments that, so check that box. I don't have any boxes unchecked. Any questions from or concerns by anybody? I mean, I think when, George. We talked about um, some pretty clear markings on this driveway, one way in, one way out. That was discussed, and that's on the plaintiffs. And I feel bad I don't have the plaintiffs. That's on the Correct. There, and there's also signage as well. And no parking in that one the place that there was that turnaround that the emergency vehicles needed. Mm -hmm. um, is that reflected? I missed that. I'm sorry. What, what, at the end, uh, towards the the easement road, Phillips. The, the Phillips, there was a at least the, one of the things I wanted was a some sort of sign that says you can't park with an emergency. No parking. Where the emergency vehicles need that turn at, at the end. At the end, with a turnaround. Yeah, the front thing. yeah. Um, we don't we don't have that, but um, that's something that you know. I like. It, it wasn't on the. Comment so, but if it's something for yeah, wanted to look at for yeah. it's for an emergency vehicle, all right? Emergency vehicle, only. yes, it doesn't seem unreasonable. I mean, if that's what it's for, yep. yeah, okay. Well, I think what you want is a no parking sign there, yeah, that's yeah, right, that's right. right. Yeah, we'll add put no parking, yeah, sign. that's that's what. So I'll include that on the, yes. we still have to submit that to DPW. Yeah. I'll include okay. that. Anything else? Okay. So public, uh, public comment is still open, so I'm going to hear a motion to close. A motion to close the public comment. Second. Second, Gary. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, so we've got, um, one condition, just a no parking sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tree, do you want well, well with, the, with the comments by the staff, so um, yeah. none of which the applicant have any issue with. So um, all stored drain pipes in the right of way shall be RCP, an eight inch wide painted crosswalk across Phillips, which was shown. Um, tree protection for all trees to remain must be installed and inspected. And prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy, final tree replacement must be made for the 154 inches of trees removed and then the no parking sign and that final lighting is built stamped even though they confirm that they're not yeah i mean i've heard they're drawing and we can add that it's final uh, lighting as built stamped by an engineer shall be submitted showing lighting in compliance with the zoning and not to exceed 3000 k which i think we already have we're, we're closed now so um <coughs> Mostly is going to be to approve or disapprove a special permit and to major site plan. Major a major site plan. plan and then a special permit for two items. But major site plan. Do it. Go for it. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, a special permit and major site plan for the property. 10 Holly Street um, by the applicant with the conditions as noted earlier and uh, the special permit includes um, the uh, uh, allowance of one curb cut 
an additional curb cup and uh, more than a five foot setback along the Holly Street front. Motion for a second. Second. Second, Yuri. Any discussion? All in favor? Good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to be clear that final condition, there is no site lighting, so an engineer can't confirm that. We're not providing any site lighting. Well, well it's not applicable. I mean, I don't know if they call the, the, the lights the on the The outdoor outside. lighting would be considered because it's hitting the site. The light by the door? Yeah. You want an All engineer to confirm lighting. that that meets that requirement? Yeah. Okay. It shouldn't be hard to, to meet, so. But yeah, so thank you. So we're good on that one. Yes. Oh yes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm not back. Yeah. I'll probably your car for a while. Yeah. Was it the Astros? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they were cheating. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, I mean, that's what it looked like. I was like, who was here? Did you see the big one? Oh, it's here for Zoe Boy. Whoa! Who are you? Didn't see you hiding the, I know. Representing the whole neighborhood. The whole neighborhood. The big one? The pineapple has used it on a couple. What the hell? Bill's wife was talking about that. It's a video of their church in the Yeah, it is. Thank you, guys. Good night. All right. uh, next up, our second and final hearing scheduled for 7.15 uh, p.m. by Sunwood Development Corp. Site plan amendment to relocate sidewalk connection to Olander for one Olander Drive and Northampton map ID 31C-81. And before we start, um, for everyone here from the public, I should note uh, that uh, we've worked, uh, my company's worked with uh, Jeff's company on many occasions. Uh, I don't feel that uh, prevents me from being objective in this case. If somebody feels otherwise for the public, raise your hand and I can accuse uh, that not happening. Jeff, the floor is all yours. Great. Thank you, Mark. Uh, for the record, Jeff Swire from Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of Sunwood Builders. Um, here requesting an amendment to the site plan um, that was approved, uh, or actually this is an amendment to an amendment. Um, for the, uh, the co-housing development up at Village Hill. Um, if you recall, there's a requirement um, of the project to connect the multi-use trail, which extends, I guess, north to south. Um, can't drive the mouse well here on the little podium, but um, runs, runs parallel with Village, or with Olander. There was a connection that uh, was proposed to be constructed at Memorial Park uh, up, to, up to the street level. Um, primarily due to a, a specimen tree that um, was was preventing us from putting a sidewalk in, in this location, which is, um, I think, for the project and for all intents and purposes, um, connectivity-wise, made more sense, but that specimen tree prevented us from doing that grading. That tree has since died or was injured enough that it needed to come down, so it provided um, some opportunities to, to revisit this. Um, and so here, just to, um, request an amendment to the previous permit that allows us to, to install a, a sidewalk in that location to connect it to uh, the multi-use trail and the sidewalk of it um, up at Olanda. Can you zoom in on that area at all? I can certainly try. Yep. Do you have a plan? What are the two red circles? Those are just the two walk locations oh, that we were that we were discussing, yeah. Just rather than getting bogged down with the whole site plan, I was just trying to highlight that. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll be there, yeah. What was the history wire trying to get to this of that specimen tree dying? Uh, 
it, we had worked around it before because um, it was still in decent enough condition. I think it was a sugar maple. Um, I'm trying to remember what, what species it was. Um, but um, so this, this tree here in particular uh, was preventing us from getting an accessible walk up to, up to Olander. But that tree was in a you know, relatively poor condition to begin with. It is since um, you know, not much work has gone on around it. It has it, just lost limbs like some of the other trees up there. And, and tree warden went up and took a look and agreed that it, it should come down. So that came down earlier. Um, the last and I'll, I'll clarify that actually, even before construction started, uh, the tree warden looked and said, that tree is not going to make and that it was already in decline um, before construction okay. started. So what, well, what they had taken out some other trees and made it more, more obvious yeah. that that the tree actually was probably not worth saving. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't, uh, it was pretty early on. It wasn't in the conveniently. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. And then I just also want to clarify, the requirement isn't to connect the multi-use path to the sidewalk, it's to connect the project to the Olander sidewalk. So it, it, it does need to be a cement concrete sidewalk because the idea is you're creating a path from the co-housing project, not necessarily the multi-use path itself. To Orlando. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. And so back on the tree, does the, the loss of that tree versus the removal of that tree trigger the, the need to replace the, the diameter of that tree? No, because it was, they were, Planning on saving it, it's it was because it was diseased okay. and already in decline, so okay. it doesn't, you know, toll on the toll. Okay. And I will note that there there is some effort to improve on the planting plan, and particularly in that intersection. So there are some, you know, there's already some additional trees there now. There's going to be some more just south of that. So um, there will, you know, whether required or not, there's certainly certainly going to be compensated with some additional. Trees. Trees on there, smaller trees on that area. There will be some smaller trees in there, yes. So I was up there today and so that switchback trail in gray is already kind of laid out, mm -hmm. correct? Um, although the multi so when I see uh, it looks like the multi use trail comes right along there. Uh well the mul let's see. This this one here, the one on the north side of um the the one on the north side. So that gray area to the right of your red circle that comes down to the south. That's yes, the use trail. That's the most correct. Correct. But that's not completed at this point. No, that's it's not, not extended. Not, right. And we're still extending that. Correct. It's part of the overall master plan to yes. do that. Okay. And this applicant is responsible for that piece of it. Right. Yes. Okay. So my and then as it comes up that switchback and I see there's a crossing there mm -hmm. to go to the other sidewalk. Yes. But there's no development on that side. And TCB yes, there's an approved project. TCB just got funding actually mm -hmm. for to move forward on that project. Right. So it's gonna be I, fifty three units. I thought that project. was much further over to behind those five units. So it's uh -huh. all in there. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, that's the road weight that will access that 53 uh -huh, unit. Is that right where that sidewalk okay. goes in? Yeah. So I guess my concern is, so our co-housing now is over to the right there beyond mm -hmm. those two trees. And when I look at that, if I'm a young person, I'm just going to walk right up by those two trees in order to access the road, you know, and then walk along the road to the left to go somewhere. Um, I don't know why this, you know, it's, it's hard to describe, but I think folks are just going to walk from here right up like this, boom. I don't know if they're going to go all the way out on the street and come around to here and then go over to there. But we can't uh, mandate walking patterns, right? But there are also, that's just one section of the whole co-housing, there's another section to the north, so it's, it's um oh okay so so it, it and the requirement was that it connect that whole piece to Olander uh -huh. and it has to be ADA accessible or compliant I see mm -hmm. that was I remember last time the ADA they were, they were limited as to where they can do an ADA mm -hmm. connection yeah yeah, yeah. The right yeah. Okay. it drops there all right 
right. So right now, the north section, which is on, is just a big parking lot now. Yes. It's just the staging area. Yes. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I forgot about the whole plan and that, what it looked like. It's hard to keep track of this mm -hmm. village hill. This great village hill. <laughs> <laughs> State hospital. <laughs> is, is, is it, it active? active? Getting off topic a little bit, but are there units that are active right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The southern, the southernmost units are, are occupied. I was walking my dog last weekend. And I forgot that it gets dark at 4:30. Mm -hmm. Talking the woods <laughs> in the dark, and when I came out, I saw the lights on down yeah. down there. And I didn't realize it was that far along. So, um, back to topic though. So, uh, any questions for Jeff? And you understood this, it's not a, a bituminous. Bituminous, correct. Yeah. Okay. And DPW had another comment as well that there, um, this is the first time they've shown, I guess, the extent of the permeable pavement, or at least the DPW has seen the permeable yeah. pavement. Right. So it just, they just had a comment to make sure that that extends under the drip line of those beech trees, um, which I think was the plan all along, but. Um, yeah, and, and really the only, I, mean, I, I don't have all the details here, I mean, I think. Right. Um, they're talking about down here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, without without having pictures, the, the this portion that runs relatively straight is all existing roadbed. Yep. Um, so there really isn't much grading or disturbance that's going to be needed there at all, other than just sort of cleaning that up. There's there's a drop in the grade as it goes down to the beech trees. That's the part that we're protecting. So. Um, we don't anticipate the need for um, that porous material over the existing road bed because it's existing road bedded anywhere off that. It will be the, the porous material, certainly. That's a huge peach tree. Uh -huh. See that? Yes. Yeah. Back there behind the yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. Certainly one of the healthier looking ones. Right. Yeah, they're starting to die off up there, unfortunately. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Jeff. We'll have uh, right. keep it open. And uh, any questions from the public? represent the public. <laughs> um, I'm Margaret Bullitt Jonas. Uh, I live with my husband Robert Jonas at 109 Olander Drive, which is the house right there at the intersection of Olander and Ford Crossing. And I just want to say uh, we've had a number of conversations with Sunwood Fielders and with Jeff and I think at least a couple of hearings with you all discussing the location of the path. And I just want to say my husband and I are really happy with the, the outcome to have it be where it is, which to me makes sense and will leave some, just leaves more natural, <coughs> there's more opportunities for green and trees and shrubs and so on with this layout. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm just glad it worked out well. Super, thank you. That's your question. I know. Any other uh, comments from or questions? The board. So the only is that so the condition we have is uh, it's, it's concrete five, and opportunities. Yeah, five feet wide, cement concrete. Yeah. Uh, so public comment is still open. Uh, Close yeah. public comment. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? No. All in favor? Okay. So public comment is closed. Any questions by the board? So that's it. We've got one condition uh, for a five foot concrete sidewalk in lieu of the I move to approve uh, the uh, Sunset Dolmet Corporate Site Plan Amendment to relocate the sidewalk connection to Olander or one Olander Drive, Northampton Map ID 3C 31C 81, and that it be concrete. Thank you.